Hello everyone and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where we go, go huh? Joining me this week, Brandon. Please, Bill, please, please let it be real. Noah. You're supposed to say, go huh? And Ills. I'm 100% team hoax. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I mean, here we are. It's It's later than we normally record because we are free... Of that nasty UK man, Saphir. <laughs> we don't have to record early. We can... 8.30, baby. Wild parties. Late night stuff's happening. Well, we deported all our brown people, so... No. no. Well, no, it was already not in America, so there, therein lies the rub. We've uh, achieved the ethnostate, state, finally. Oh, Lord. JonTron's happy about it. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you boys doing? I'm staying out of this. Super hyped! <laughs> You're hyped? Let me tell you something. This is not the way I expected this intro to go. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's man. It's been if I could describe the last like forty eight hours, I would use the word roller coaster. <laughs> wow, you took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've alluded to it, but uh, you know, I guess it's worth mentioning. The the views have gone up a little bit. The listens have gone up a little bit in a couple weeks. So if you haven't heard, we're a group of guys that are all speaking right now in a group in a room called Smash Chat. Everyone but me comes from a Smash fan site. I'm not going to say the name of it. That way you can't look up our old bad post from when we were 13 years old. But, uh, you know, we're Smash boys in our heart. And uh, if you didn't know, there's been upheaval in the world of smash brothers speculation this week and we're going to talk about it because sometimes we talk about leaks on here sometimes we don't but you know what this is too close to our hearts we spent so much time off air talking about it may as well do it on mic so everyone stop we we are taking a risk here by the way because boy oh boy this comes out we're recording this thursday night it could go up monday this could all be proven wrong (laughs) if it does yeah (laughs) deal with it you get a look at this little moment in time either way uh but uh, late tuesday night and a image is uploaded of a screenshot from a snapchat the world we live in uh where some man in french says fuck nintendo lol <laughs> and on it on this snapchat there is the banner we all know and love from super smash brothers ultimate However, if you look at it, you realize there's actually a little armband you can put on, right? Like you like you, you fold it around itself and there's a little notch that you slide in and that's how you make it stay as a little band. But all, people looked at it. They looked at the at the banner and they said, this doesn't quite look right. This doesn't, this doesn't hmm, something strange here. And what do they see? But seven unannounced characters for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on this banner. Can anyone name them off the top of their head right now? Yes. Andrew Kazooie, Mock Rider, Gino, uh, Ken, Ken Shadow, Shadow, Isaac, Isaac, Mac Rider, Gino, and Chorus Kids. Um, Chorus Kids. Kids. You did it. There's all seven. All right. This ignites the internet. They say, what? Pardon? People look at the image. There is a name up top that is marked out. <laughs> However, it was poorly marked out. Uh, and people realize this guy's name and they look it up and he works in marketing companies that handle distribution and marketing materials and the company that he worked at worked with bandai namco in the past so people say oh my gosh this is real right uh then that goes for a little bit then a bunch of insiders come out and they say "Mm, i can't say why but i'm pretty sure this is fake this annoys a lot of people on the internet (laughs) myself included because it's like it's the i know something you don't know but uh that sort of there's been twists and turns along the way it's turned out the guy the original place we thought the guy worked at works at a different place but they also handle video game stuff there's been things about the background about everything else but at the end of the day that's sort of where we stand uh, and I guess I, I want to first throw it to Brandon <laughs> because you clearly have the most conflicting emotions on this. How do you feel about this leak in particular and just the way that leaks and smash brothers in particular interact? Well, I'm exhausted mentally. 
from this. <laughs> I, I dreamt about it. I thought about it all day at work, yesterday mm-hmm. and today. Mm-hmm. And I just can't stop thinking about Smash Brothers, and rightfully so. I mean, usually I can't anyway, but this even more so. Because when I saw this, I was like, oh, huh, that's funny, right? But then the evidence piled up. Mm-hmm. And it made me a believer. Because I was like, "There's this is either a fake or the most elaborate hoax of all time that's ever been put together. And so- if... Congratulations to this man. He's an evil genius if he puts yes. this all together. Perhaps um, the the sickest twist, really fast. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. The Grinch is involved in this story. Yeah, <laughs> the Grinch renders that nobody's ever seen before that would line up with, you know, all you know, all of the stuff put together. And you know, supposedly that that printing company not only does stuff on track record for Bandai Namco, but also for uh, whatever damn companies printed. Illumination? Uh, Illumination. Yeah. Those, yeah Illumination, the Universal, whatever companies. I know yeah. it's Un- Illumination makes a movie, but there's some other, you know, picture company that owns it. But yeah, it's just there's so much lining up right in the way of this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, little was, things too. Like Sakurai bought a gun for from a model figure. He talked about how he bought the figure for an upcoming game, and it's specifically the gun he was buying it for. And you look at Mock Rider's gun and that figure's gun, and it yeah. kind of lines up. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> the Charlie Kelly chart that some guy made was mm-hmm. the thing that really got me going because mm-hmm. it was all lining up. Everything was lining up. The 108 stages that Koro Koro now says, whoops, that was, uh, uh, sorry, that was 103. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I think Nintendo put a gun to their head because they're like, hey, that sh- no. So, <laughs> you know, I think there's a lot to this that's, oh, man. It has me going crazy. Uh, so I'm just, I'm very conflicted because I want this to be real because just thinking about this roster made me very happy. Mm-hmm. A lot of these characters are characters that I could have only dreamed could be in Smash Brothers. This is Banjo, true. Banjo, you know, Isaac. Isaac, never in a million years would I have thought. So Isaac. here I am. Like, <laughs> yeah, Isaac's a big deal, man, for me and for Noah. We love Golden Sun. We're Golden Sun boys around here. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, it's a big deal, and I just want it to be real. I'm just I'm just over here going crazy because now all these people are like shooting it down with it. but the worst part is there's more evidence for it than there is against it. The only evidence against it yeah. I see are the people who are claiming incineroars in this game and will die by that. Yeah. That's like the only yeah, evidence I can see thing. against it. Yeah. Well. It's coming from another quote unquote credible leaker. That's all they got going for them, is that like Trust me, I know what's in the game. Mm-hmm. Well, like there's, they have nothing really backing up their claim besides they were right in the past, even yeah. though they missed out. Like they missed on some stuff that they, that obviously were announced for the game. So it's like, yeah, do they really know everything about the game? Or but, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, and that's part of it is that like the people that that are saying it's fake aren't even saying it's fake in so far as, hey, this is like a bunch of characters I know for sure are in the game. It's that a character that I think is in the game isn't in the game, right? Mm, now, yeah. this this has a history in Smash. Krom happened famously with the Gamatsu leak back in Smash 4, where, where that was, you know, happened in the middle of development, was canceled midway through, Sakurai himself said. Uh, but, I mean, to, in some level of fairness to the leakers, right, I don't think they're acting in bad faith. Some people are like, oh, they're just attention grabbers. These are generally people that aren't, like, trying to make a living on youtube they're not but they're not not everyone's liam robertson where they're asking you to donate to their patreon but they you know i think there's a non-zero chance that they might be working with incomplete information but they're working with what they know you know Mm -hmm. and that leaves space for them to potentially be wrong but there's also space for this leak to be an incredibly elaborate leak you know just a crazy (laughs) extensive amount of work would have to be done or someone yeah but like with this leak is in particular like the whole um 108 stages thing like they had to plan ahead and backwards yeah like the the, is like the person that would have been able to go through this and pull it off at this like this leak of this level would have to be like either insanely lucky or like very 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 intelligent or like really good at predicting shit yeah and what and what do they get out of it if they do right other than Mm -hmm. to say haha but tricked you bunch of nerds right yeah what do they get out of it other than to say that 
Like, I, I, I can enough. understand what they would get out of it in favor for it, right? They can be yeah. like, I was the guy who leaked the Smash Brothers roster to everyone, right? That's something big. But to, like, just be like, ha, I tricked you nerds. Like, I don't know. It would be well, a lot. One guy that did uh, Rayman uh, for Smash 4, that whole big thing where he did, like, the video with uh, a yes. portrait of Rayman. And yeah, the, the, the smash attack. He did guy. that. That was really good. He put in effort, but that didn't take him... Like fucking months to pull off. Like if somebody would, have yeah, done this it was thing. impressive. Yeah. And it he was also did really it. Good. Yeah, it was really impressive. But he also did it just to promote his channel as well. Yes. Yeah, YouTube. And and, and I don't know where to you... constantly. Yeah, and that's part of it too. Is and we'll get to this. Is so there is a scenario where this is just you know sort of like the the fake NX controller, right? Where the reason that that leak got so crazy was because people looked at the Photoshop aspect of it and said, "This looks like a real object. This is out there, right? This is a physical thing that someone's holding." And it, the the reveal is it's a guy whose job he has a 3D printer available to him at all times, so he was able to very quickly sort of churn out this 3D model, you know of the of these patents there is a scenario where this guy works at a company like this is a smash fan and is a graphic designer and can do this right that is a admittedly unlikely scenario if we're occam's razoring it but it's a not impossible one that would be the easiest explanation for why it could be fake but when you have the company that was originally implicated in this going on twitter uh, on their facebook excuse me and making public statements saying we have not worked with Bamco on Smash Ultimate. We are good partners. We would never leak something like this. And we're looking at potential legal action when we have a guy's name out there that is found through LinkedIn. I'm not saying it here because I don't want to dox the guy. You know, this guy is probably going to lose his job, real or fake. Right. right. It's because there are people that are calling these companies that he's now associated with asking about this stuff. Right. Yeah. They wouldn't make such a big deal out of it if it was fake. Like Nintendo would have just brushed it, shrugged it off. Well, I mean, not even that, but like the, it's just on this personal level, this guy's risking a lot if this is a leak or if it's real. Mm -hmm. But for, for the leak, especially unless he's just not super sharp and didn't think through the consequences of his actions, which is totally possible. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, and part of it, too, is. The discussion right, is so frustrating because very rarely do we get leaps, leaks like this that add more hope, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like the ESRB leak, like people were sort of running wild during Smash 4 days. Th Smash Ultimate has been defined a lot by two characters being left, right? Box Theory has been just this ever present looming annoyance for the last two mm -hmm. months, right? And Ken and Incinera are all we have left. So suddenly this very convincing image that has a bunch of characters that i mean i think a lot of people have been asking for for a long time it sucks to have just a bunch of people say this is wrong you shouldn't be excited but i can't tell you why <laughs> yeah it, it really does suck now of course those people shouldn't be getting harassed or anything that's stupid and and some people are because but it's a video game. Don't do that, obviously. Uh, but just and, and so we're at this moment where there is just an impasse. But um, I, I because we are a month out, right? Sort of, I guess I, I just want to do a check in because we all do care so much about Smash Brothers. I think that there's I mean, maybe you can disagree. I think that we probably have one more direct in us in terms of Smash Ultimate. One. Yeah, yeah. he still has Didn't to explain that? what that mode was. And he said they was going to talk about it in a later time. So. Yeah, he is going to talk about that, and obviously he's going to bring a couple of characters along for the ride. Yeah, and so but I was just going to ask. I what, never would have ever guessed it was going to be fucking seven. Yes, that's the thing is that you're like, especially with Sakurai, is like we're going to slow down the pace a little bit. Like a couple of yeah. weeks ago, he made that statement. So but I guess he's also tricked us in the past before. Like yeah, he's always, like he constantly is going against things that he always says. So. He may have just said it's a fool us to drop our guard and then be like, boom, there are yeah. seven characters. And I you mean, like me now. <laughs> Brandon, you said yesterday, like a very Sakurai sentence that was just like, you could see him totally saying, right? Which is just like, we couldn't oh, help ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he would start off by saying, I know what I said. And then just explain, I know I said that we, were, we weren't going to be too many newcomers, so don't expect too much. But we just couldn't help ourselves. Yeah, and, and like, you're like, <laughs> I heard that exactly in my brain when you said it. That like you can imagine the exact tone the translator makes and the little joking <laughs> pause that Sakurai will make when he does these presentations. Like, 
and it would technically be less than the least number of smash of newcomers anyways even if it was all seven which is pretty wild it gives you perspective mm-hmm. on smash as a series and how how much it adds yeah um but yeah I, it's uh, so like i guess my question is do are we are we thinking that it's real or thinking it's fake where are our expectations with what is left for smash ultimate if you were to like stake a claim at this point right not even stake a claim but just your emotions on it right now uh my emotion is that it, is it december 7th yet and also <laughs> it's real it's real you we, we, we are believing uh, yeah i'm <laughs> going this <laughs> no i don't know if i'm believing i'm pretty wary uh this thing is like always like a national treasure movie level conspiracy to every fucking leak that ever comes out so i don't even know what to believe ever and the fact that you know we're probably only getting one direct and seven characters in one direct seems a bit uh outlandish yeah i don't know bro it's it's a lot to take in are you thinking more than two though? Or are you are you thinking Kenan and Sinner or you're I'm I'm team? hoping for as many as I can get, but I don't have any I don't have any any thoughts about it, you know, any kind of logical processes yeah. behind my thoughts. That's fair. That's that's <laughs> the reasonable human being stance on it, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I can't I don't do know. that. I can't. No. I'm a crazy <laughs> motherfucker when it comes to Smash. I, I can't. Yeah, we could do this for literally hours of just like, it, maybe this, here's the pattern with the Pokemon in the past. Maybe there's a case where there's not Incineroar, guys. Like, you know, we we can seem like insane people if you want. But uh, I, I think just talking about it, especially, is going to be interesting because it's a leak that's unlike any other leak we've ever seen before, too. Like, you know, if this turns out to be fake, I don't know if I can open my heart up again. I don't know. You oh, can, my God. You can, Mm-hmm. You say <laughs> that, the but then the, the following week is going to come out some fucking league. You're like, oh, can we believe this mm, one? You're right. You're right. But uh, <laughs> no. And part of it is the SRB leak happened too. Right? You're right. Like, we had this leak that ended up being real. And so, like, in your heart, you're like, maybe it's that again. Um, now, that's the thing, though. Like, with the SRB or whatever leak, um, there was, like, no evidence behind it supporting it to be true. This is, like, the first legit time. Like, when I first heard of this leak, I was like, okay, one of those is gonna be, okay, we'll, we'll run it through its course, everyone will believe, and then get disappointed, blah, blah, blah. But then it's just, like, like Brandon mentioned, it's, like, just more evidence backing it up more and more as, like, time went on. So I was just like, okay, th- like, we never seen a, a leak with this much supporting evidence before. Like, this is unreal. Yeah, if, if it like, was fake, it would be a completely different angle to go on how to make your leak valid. Because, like, you know, people talk about the image, and, I mean, to its credit, the image hasn't been debunked in a lot of ways. The biggest critiques against it are that the background's slightly different, but uh, the background has been changed before in small, subtle ways, so there's, you know, the chance that maybe it's just changed again to make the new banner. Uh, but, like, so much of the of the strongest evidence for it doesn't have to do with the actual like in-game material you know and that's mm-hmm. strange to ha- people don't know how to have that conversation online it's just it's new to them uh so you know wait but wasn't there didn't we learn something today like that the guy didn't work there for you know however many months or something so the place that we originally thought he worked at it turns out because people found his linkedin page his linkedin page he, he made another one essentially the other twist is that uh if this is right this is like a guy that's in his 40s which is pretty wild uh but he uh is working at another marketing company that also works on video game stuff so is this thing where he has a history of working in this industry for a prolonged period of time at this point um but there was a second there where everyone thought oh maybe he didn't actually work there anymore but he is working he's not working at the original place anymore but he is working at another place that could also still be doing distribution for smash ultimate because they do video game marketing distribution particularly to places like gamestop and to events um so right now we're in another wrinkle in the conspiracy like i said it's a roller coaster there's highs and lows twists and turns this is an ace attorney investigation phoenix wright is going to have to be the one to solve this one for us along i hope he's in smash too that would be sick (laughs) He does. He's not in Marvel anymore, so that's what we have to deal with. Uh, but that is that's our that's our little conversation about Smash Ultimate. We're gonna obviously talk more about it as the times go on. But um, 
yeah, that's that's sort of the long and short of it. You may have heard all that and thought these idiots. Clearly, it was fake. I know it's fake now. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you said at the beginning of this, we're gonna it, this is gonna go up on Monday, and by the time Monday rolls around, it could all be either disproven or all be proven correct. So who fucking knows? Mm-hmm. So I mean, we'll find out. Now, I have to say, um. This is a little bit of a personal will thing, but hopefully it will be interesting enough on on, on the scale of it. We did get September NPDs, uh, which are sales. I don't want to go over all of the numbers. That's dumb. But Spider-Man, you may have heard of it, did very, very well. I just want to throw out this little statistic for you. It is uh, the highest. It's the best selling exclusive in PlayStation history at la- in the first month. Wow, really? That's yeah. Pretty high. Yeah, uh, wow. you know. I didn't even buy it. Yeah, you don't it's, have a PlayStation. Uh, that would be a limiting fact. No, you have a PlayStation, don't you, Brandon? I do. Oh, I thought you didn't. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I have a PlayStation Four. Mm-hmm. My bad. I'm an all console kind of man. Um, Bro, I thought your achievements all the way. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean yes. It's a preference nice. for the achievements. I love video games, so I love all consoles. Uh, but this is my favorite thing. Um, that the launch month sales for spider-man were 30 37 percent higher than all other spider-man games combined um so think of literally every spider-man game that's come out in our entire lifetimes this game sold 37 percent more than all of those put together well a lot of them have been shit right like, yeah but also they movie games well. and- yeah but like spider-man 2 did was like a bet was it got it got the little nintendo thing a little like hey nintendo select on the gamecube i remember so that's fun. That's just the whole thing. And good news for everyone. Uh, everyone's still doing well. The Xbox One X is the best-selling Xbox, which is surprising to me. The $500 thing is, is the best-selling version of that console rather than the $250 version. Forza did the best it's ever done in the entire history of, of the series with Game Pass. And really? Nintendo, still the best-selling software publisher of the year. So Yeah. Man, yeah. Everybody's doing good. I'm glad. Mm-hmm. So there you go. There's our little moment uh, of, of MPD talk. Um, I try to keep it under like two minutes. I think we just barely got over it. But uh, moving on, I have this is one that I found out very recently. I didn't even tell you guys before the podcast, but I want to have a conversation around it uh, because I think there's two parts to it. Uh, actually, really quickly, we mentioned last week we had a prolonged conversation about Rockstar and crunch culture. Uh, we talked about how Drayson Schreier of Kotaku said he was doing a big piece about this. He, it's up. It's very extensive. It's long, but it's very good. Um, there is some crazy stuff in there. For example, uh, if you leave the game uh, at any time before two weeks before launch, if you worked on Red Dead Redemption 2, your name would not appear in the credits. What? Yeah. Uh, and that's been true for Rockstar for forever. So it doesn't matter. It seems like it doesn't matter if it was because of sickness or because of like having a kid or whatever. If you were not there at the finish line, you did not get your name in the credits of the game, um, which is a thing that people actually use a lot when they are trying to get new jobs is that, you know, you have to be credited. Um, which, it sounds pretty spiteful. What the fuck is yeah. that? That it's I mean, they, they said this is our pl- strategy to make sure that people get to the finish line. Um, oh. And also, they tie all their bonuses to not yearly, but when the game comes out. Uh, and so, of course, you know, that leads to situations like, you know, if if you read that and you get mad, I would say boycotting the game actually wouldn't be super effective because that's only really affecting the employees bonuses, not yeah. the executives. Uh, and the employees specifically said, don't boycott the game. We would like our bonuses to be nice, please. Um, but like, but if you want more details on that, go to Jason Schreier of Kotaku. It's you, if you search, if you search it, it's there. I can understand that aspect because the, obviously the employers want people to stay on the team and not just ditch them mid, uh, mid, uh, development because that would might actually cause the, the product not to come out on time, either be late or bad or not come out at all. But he said, a lot of people leave. he said for any reason, like even if you're sick. Yeah, well, they, they, right. They, they they've apparently softened on that a, bit a little extreme, bit, though, but yeah. like, yeah, you're just is the situation where, you know, if you work, this game took seven years to make. If you somehow left a month after working on it for six yeah. years and you don't get credit, that's rough. That's just inherently yeah. like, oh, not stupid. Bad. Um, but 
speaking of Kotaku, there was another article I read right after, and and it ties into a thing that happened. So, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Really quick, th- the game did not launch super strong, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, it did better than Rise of the Tomb Raider, but it did Rise of the Tomb Raider, if you recall, was an Xbox One exclusive. Um, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider was a, was below expectations, apparently. So, as will happen, it went on sale on Steam this week for 35% off a month after the game came out. What the fuck? Already? That's wow, crazy. Jesus. Uh, and it got review bombed on Steam as a result from people that bought the game that were like, what? Oh, come on. What? Yes. It's so come stupid. On. Get, that, get that petty shit out of here. Don't do yes. that. Oh, my God. So, a lot of pettiness I, I, in this news. I thought we were in a happy place. I thought so, uh, but I, I want to get to two parts of this. One, this has exposed an interesting situation. We live in a world where games go on sale faster than ever. Uh, is there is there a situation like, Brandon, you bought Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at this game being, did you uh, buy the season pass or anything for it? No, I honestly, I haven't bought a season pass for a game in years. Yeah. Okay. Like, I've. I've risen above that shit. <laughs> I'm not dumb anymore. I used to buy season passes for games, and I would get burned too many times. Yeah, like you know, you you either you either you're this the stuff that comes out you end up not giving a shit about, or you moved on by the time the shit comes out. You don't that's, even get around to playing. That's so fucking true. Yeah. So. I've learned, you know, the only season passes I ever bought that I was like, I'm glad I bought this, Borderlands. That's it. Or the, you know, Telltale games, right? Because mm-hmm. I guess technically those are season you're buying, passes. You're buying the game. Right? Yeah, like you buy the, game. the whole game, but you kind of get an episode for free, so it's like a season pass. But yeah. like Borderlands 1 and 2, I'll say, season passes, they showed how to do it, right? I don't think it's really been done that, that right again <laughs> since. Like most of the time, it's a damn ripoff. Uh, so yeah, no, I didn't buy the season pass. <laughs> yeah, because part of what got people mad was that, in particular, the version with the season pass got fifty percent off of it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so it feels like a situation where the people that are the biggest fans of the series sort of were the ones that were suffering the most, like in terms they of like burnt. having bought early. Uh, yeah, but they yeah. got the game first. What the fuck is the problem here? Right. Yeah, it's and that's thing, my like. Thing. I'm not mad that I bought the game when it came out. I'm glad I supported the game. I. And I want, I, I'm going crazy because there's too many games coming out. I'm playing too much shit. I want to play the game. I've, been, I've only played it for like five hours. Yeah. And it's driving me nuts because I want to play it because I loved the five hours I played. But like, God damn it, video games and work and life, slow down. Yeah. Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out in like oh three God, hours. Dude. And you're like, well, that's a game that's going to be a hundred oh, hours. Yeah. Well, three hours. <laughs> oh, uh, but uh, I, I want to, I, part of what this ties into is that there was another Kotaku article that was very interesting that was just talking to game developers about if you, if you go on Steam and you look over where it says reviews, user reviews, and it'll say overwhelmingly positive, mostly positive, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. You may notice that it's color-coded uh, in that it will be blue or like a nice green if it's good review. Then it'll like get more and more like, you know, yellow than, than red accordingly. Um so they read did an article that essentially we're talking to a lot of indie developers saying this user review thing is a direct cause of sales going up or going down. It's it's actually a huge role in how our game does. Um, and so when this system exists where, you know, just they say the color changing is literally all that matters. If someone goes into a game and they see the yellow instead of the green, they drop out. Um, mm-hmm. this is a thing like that we just mentioned with Shadow of the Tomb Raider because it went on sale early can be review bombed for any reason right it could be the game goes on sale it could be the developer you know uh, makes a tweet that people don't like it could be literally anything and that can directly if- impact sales across the board wow yeah yeah well and sometimes in some cases it can be A gift and a curse. Yes. Because sometimes it could happen where people are being petty and it could be a really good game and something stupid happens like it goes on sale and people do that. And okay, well, you're destroying the reputation of a good game. Mm -hmm. Um, 
other times it could be somebody did something seedy or backhanded, but they wanted better out of this company. So they review bomb it. And guess what? Uh, company says we made a mistake and they fix it. Speaking yeah. of, and this is non related to video games kind of, but I want to mention it anyway. It kind of reminds me of a situation I've been keeping track of. Uh, Barstool Sports. I don't know if mm-hmm. you know anything about them. Big, yeah. They're, they're, they're a sports, uh, you know, media outlet kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, started in Boston, so I'm a big fan of them. Lots of Patriots fans there. Um, anyway, they, there's one of the, the main guys there. He does pizza reviews. He goes around the country and does pizza reviews to all these like. Uh, yes, I've seen this. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, one bite, everybody knows the rules. And he gives he gives a pizza a ranking. From one to ten, he does like an a point decimal point system, and he went to this place recently called Goodfellas, and I can't remember what state they're in. Um, but this this place, he was just shooting the video, you know, having the, having the guy record him in the middle of his review. Uh, well, first he takes the pizza and says, "This pizza seems like it's ice cold." In the middle of his review, one of the employees goes over to, "Hey, do we give you permission to film here?" I mm-hmm. think because they knew he was, they were calling out their pizza. Mm -hmm. in front of like kind of a crowd Mm -hmm. so like no we're just reviewing pizza he's like well take it over there and he's like oh okay he's like i see how it is he's like i'm giving this pizza 0.0 my first one ever so he gives the gives the pizza a zero and everybody all the reactions are dude that's barstool sports you can't do that and people (laughs) he's like big mistake buddy big mistake this place got bombarded on social media on yelp on everything People just rated their stuff, gave them the worst reviews ever, said, keep saying 0.0 on everything. Recently, they closed their doors, not to shut down the restaurant, but they closed their doors for uh, for indefinitely to say, we're going to be better. We made a mistake. I don't, we're going to make I don't know better. if this is a good example. I, don't, I think that's, over, <laughs> that's a huge overreaction to what happened there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, it's a, it's, it's a similar situation where, you know, maybe they... They were making mistakes, and now because of this kind of situation happened, maybe they're going to be better than they ever have been. There's a lot of gray in that, that pizza example. place. We actually did have decent pizza, and they just guy maybe he just had a bad experience with somebody talking about his pizza, yeah. and they just didn't want to cause trouble. Yeah, they wanted. And and that away. guy has a lot of power and made a business shut down, right? Like and, that's well, you know they, like they a, they did it on their own end. Well, he didn't even review the pizza, apparently. He just got mad that they kicked him out. He, he, the he, he ate the pizza. He ate the pizza. I thought. <laughs> yeah. And it was a 0.0, well, 0 pizza? Even removing the, the, the... I think the pizza thing kind of... T- I think I think it's a fair comparison, actually, Brandon. But, like, you know, I, I think that, that that being the only thing that determined the fate of this pizzeria is a problem, right? And yeah. I think that the user reviews sort of being one of the huge determining factors for any game on Steam when, right. for you know, any reason there could be a campaign led to review bomb them. Like I said, it's a is gift it, and a curse. Yeah. So, like, you know, I mean, like we mentioned last week, Discord, when you mouse over a game, it shows you the Metacritic, right? I, I, I would love Steam to do something like that, right? Like, here's what the users think. Here's what the, um, here's the what critics. the critics think. You know, and if you want to get more specific, here's what people that own a lot of games in this right. genre think versus here's what people who are new right. to it think. Right? I do like that. Kind of like how uh, Rotten Tomatoes does it. They have the audience review and also yeah. the, you know, the, the critics reviews. Yeah. And and so it's this thing that like it is weirdly extremely effective if you want to mess up a game's trajectory, and it's it's really like under discussed. And I wanted to just bring it up and uh, and talk about it because I think it is. Well, you could you need it has to be something that a lot of people agree with. It can't just be one guy that goes, "I hate this game." I'm going to rally a bunch of people unless he has good reason to rally a bunch of people. Most people are going to be like, you're a dumb idiot and not listen to him. So like, there has to be some reason. Like the game going on sale for 35% off. Yeah. Right. It's a reason. It's, it's a petty reason, but it's a reason. I don't know. know. Is there any way to combat that, that kind of influence from user reviews? I don't really think so. I mean, mean, besides weighting them differently than other reviews or, or I, I think adding more qualifiers because Steam only has user reviews. I think is part of the problem, right? And they're very much they're all lumped into one thing, and they don't really do a whole lot to differentiate the type of stuff. So I mean, you know, I don't expect Steam to go through and, and be policing 
Um, no, that's impossible. That's, that's, that's impossible. Games. But I think building an infrastructure that gives more information to people, because the issue isn't necessarily, I mean, you cannot stop people review bombing, but you can try to lessen the impact that a cup that you know that a group of bad actors can cause on a game right i think that's i think that's a fair situation right because i think that if you look at a game like no man's sky which famously was the most poorly reviewed game in steam history that reflects in all the other coverage of that game you know like there was there there was plenty of stuff talking about how bad no man's sky was at launch and like i i think that when there are situations where you know the game is bad on the scale that the overwhelmingly negative reviews will reflect that like there will be other sources that will co- like collaborate with it right that that will that will back up what the user reviews are saying so to me it's the situation where it's just something i had never thought about and now i'm like oh because i had used it before right like when i go onto a game that like someone had just barely recommended to me or i saw on twitch go on to steam see the review you know Sometimes I would be like, oh, that's a mixed review. I'm going to see you later. Right. And now I'm thinking, well, what if there's something else that happened here? Right. Like, and when you do that, then the metric becomes not as valuable as it once was. Yeah. I mean, God hands a three. Remember that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's not the best example. I mean, <laughs> I'm just I kind of hated that game. Um, <laughs> but I think uh, you should be able to bear out what the user's opinions are because they usually write like a paragraph so if you just don't go by the number and you go by the actual uh, words that they write sometimes they do sometimes they don't sometimes they are like game crashed on launch and you're like did you did you try to fix it like like i don't know right like what no, but i mean if it's if it's that then you you disregard it you move on to somebody else who has something substantive to say you know what i mean yeah you parse uh, through I, the the review the user reviews that are there and if they're all talking about bullshit then you don't you know regard their views as much as uh but most own. people yeah, don't like do it that, wouldn't right? affect people that are actually looking for a decent game to play i think it would affect more people that are just browsing yeah like, should I pick up this game oh yeah. it looks like shit okay never mind moving on but that's, that's where most game sales yeah. are done right and so i think yeah. that's like you know expecting the consumers to change their behavior i think it falls more on the side of the of the platform holder to be aware of how their system can be can have flaws in it I don't know. Uh, and like I'm know. saying, I'm not saying to get rid of it. I'm just saying add in Metacritic. Add in just some other metric so that you can have more of a full picture. Yeah, no, I like I like that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I mean, we can't. I feel yeah. like the person looking at the game has some responsibility to actually, sure. you know, do some kind of homework. No. Yeah. I I want to know. This is the real question. Did Corey in the house get a big? boost in sales when everybody started giving that game five stars on game facts yes <laughs> How do you know that is? i will i will say that Corey in the house used game sales probably did spike after that if i had to take a guess <laughs> I, the mpd group doesn't have much to say but i'm gonna go out on a limb bless. um bless but uh there it is a little a weird week for the news just a lot of like I don't know how to feel. I feel weird walking out of that one. But uh, we talked about pizza. We talked about pizza. That was fun. I like pizza. It's always a good thing. Uh, But now it's time, of course, for a thing that always makes me feel strange. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It's the list. The list. The list. Uh, This last week, Noah brought a game that was a weird one. It It was almost a discussion more about how to rank the game versus the game itself street fighter five mm-hmm. uh and i was and it ended up in the in the mid 30s right let me look right here 38. yeah 38 there we go right right above cave story saf weeps he doesn't know why but uh <laughs> this week ills is bringing a game i am i am okay. uh so i said this before in ills mania but my goal is to unify the past with the present so I'm going to the old list and I'm picking Star Wars Republic Commando. Star Wars Republic Ooh. Commando. Tell us about this game, Ills. This is a first person shooter set in the Star Wars uh, universe during the Clone Wars uh, era of that. Uh, it's kind of like a squad based uh, shooter where you kind of command the whole squad and you tell uh, different people to do different things. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, it was pretty hyped up when it came out. Has a fairly decent graphics. 
uh, we played we played it as part of the old uh, game club, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we all like really enjoyed it. Well, what do you guys think? This it, I always think back on. Like this is my main example of, I guess, reasons why I love the game club because I, when I when I think of the game club, I think of not only being able to play games that I've always wanted to play, but having random surprises of games I never would have played that somebody else suggests, right? Yeah. And this was this is like one of them, right? This was the first one that I was like, holy shit, I'm really glad I got to play this game. Mm-hmm. This is really interesting. Like, I really hadn't known or heard anything about this game. I heard all about this game when I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was late in the lifespan of the Xbox was part of yeah. it and i and i didn't have the original xbox um through that era like i got it way late right oh like, okay like three or four years ago i finally bought an original xbox so you know it i missed out on a lot of really cool games at the time mm-hmm. you know obviously i played the staples like xbox or well, on the xbox like uh, halo and you know really just halo i guess on the original xbox <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm going back and, you know, experiencing some of the games I missed, mm-hmm. like Blinks. And... No, good choice. <laughs> that one was worth it. Yeah, but no, Fun this game, you, by the way, holy this shit, I had, it's, it like blew my expectations out of the water because I had zero. Um, but I had a, a blast with this game. It was so fun. And I ended up really enjoying not only the gameplay, but the story itself. And yeah. Yeah, a lot of times in in Star Wars video games, I've never really cared about the story. It's more about, hey, I'm playing a game in the Star Wars universe, and the stories in the video games are really hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. yeah, I really liked Force Unleashed. It's corny and edgy, but it was a lot of fun. But this game, like, these, these, uh, I can't remember any other names, honestly. So, you know. Neither can I. I. Well, how, how how memorable was it? But, like, I, I remember they all had, like, unique personalities, each mm-hmm. clone. And they were just a lot of fun. Like, the, the banter between them mm-hmm. and getting to know them throughout these missions was just, like, the, the best part about this. You know what the squad reminds me of? Did you ever play Halo Reach? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's, the, the Halo Reach has sort of a very similar thing where, like, you know, Star Wars is oftentimes about, like, you know, like, it's the Jedi. It's the one person you're playing as. This was very much like a squad-focused story, right? And like, yeah, right. I liked that part of it, uh, and it's hard because when they are all stormtroopers, there's only so much you can do, you know, to mm-hmm. like visually differentiate themselves. So it makes it hard to remember the specifics of who they are. But I, you know, it's been a while since I played it, but I, I do remember liking the story because also it's set like in the Clone Wars. And I think, despite the fact the Clone Wars movie is garbage, the actual Clone Wars themselves are like a fun time to set a spinoff story in. Yeah, and so yeah. I think that it was I liked it in that regard. This game uh, uh, reminded me a lot of the Clone Wars uh, uh, animated series. The, mm-hmm. the first one uh, that the guy that did Samurai Jack did. Gendy Todorovsky. Yeah, I don't know how to say yeah. his name. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even going to try. Um, yeah, there's there's an episode in that one where it's just like the clones, like fuck, like going through a city, like absolutely demolishing everything. It's It made me feel like I was playing that cartoon when I was playing this game. So mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. So, we clearly like this game, but where yeah. would you like to put it on the list, Dills? Uh, I'm not going to get too greedy. I, I would put it maybe above Winback. Above Winback. It's above Elite Beat Agents. You know, that's where my heart lives. My heart lives in Elite Beat Agents. Oh, I love to stomp on your heart. <laughs> you might. Uh... <sighs> Where, where 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 are you at, Brandon and Noah? I did not. I, this is one of the Game Club games that I missed, so I have absolutely zero opinion on it. Oh boy! So and no, there won't be a tiebreaker. Well, yeah, you won't need a tiebreaker. Well, actually, no, you do have a tiebreaker have because it. there won't be a tie. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's three of us. Yeah. So yeah. Um, man. Um, I'm looking in the thirties. Right. Okay. Where are you looking at? Definitely above Street Fighter Five. That's a given. A hundred percent. I'm in. Yeah. Oh boy. But here's where it starts getting tough. Mm-hmm. 
Castlevania Bloodlines, very good. Mm-hmm. Stardew Valley, very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mario 3D Land. Pretty good. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. Luigi's Mansion, good. Man, I don't know, man. Uh, I think I might be comfortable putting it above Castlevania, but below Stardew. Damn, how did I convince you guys to put Winback above them then? Winback, Winback's an amazing game. <laughs> Winback is pretty wild. I, you know, it's fine. No, I know. I love yeah. Winback. It's a. Uh... I love Winback One as well. You, Winback One, we're, we'll talk about it on the next. Yeah, game. you, you three that. were the collective we that got Winback high. Oh yeah, it's we did. so good. It's such it a, is so good. It's a cool fucking game. Um, man. But Republic Commando. Commando. It's also a very Republic good Commando game. is so much higher than Winback in the original list. <laughs> we're reassessing. <laughs> we're reassessing. You know, that is not canon, Ilse. Nobody not canon. No one listening can, see can look at that list or know anything about it. <laughs> okay. It's hilariously higher. It's like, wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like 14 spots higher. All right, let's put it 14 spots above Winback. Where would that put at. it? <laughs> that would put it 20, not 20. Let me put it 15. That would be fucking. No, 17. <laughs> 70. No. It'd be above no, Mario no, Bros. No, too high. <laughs> nope. Uh, wild. Yeah, I would put it. Below, I would put it above Castlevania, but below Stardew. I think. Jesus Christ. I feel like time is playing tricks. Tricks on I your mind, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I'd put it above Super Mario 3D Land, but under Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Well. Whatever. I'm to I, do want, that. I wanted I wanted to stomp on Will's heart one one more time, but you know you want. Well, Sardis still stomps in my heart. Don't worry. You, you, this is it's not enough. You, yeah, it's true. But uh, that's like almost exactly in the middle of where each of us wanted it. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I'm willing to meet there, I suppose. Because uh, I think Luigi's Mansions, I think, doesn't get mentioned enough about how good that game is. Mm-hmm. Right. And, it is an amazing game. It's an amazing game. They're both amazing games. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, there was some frustrations to be had. I, I if I remember, with Republic Commando. Yeah, I would. Oh, yeah. I would the, say the, it's the last boss was, in like... was quite hard. Yeah, yeah. And there was there's some, there's some parts some of that game very, very annoying. Some very tough, <laughs> fucking piss me off parts. And not like fun piss you off parts, yeah. Yeah, Luigi's Mansion didn't really piss me off. <laughs> Well, sometimes with the booze. But I think those are those are more minor, I would say. Yeah. All right. Sounds All right. fine to me. Okay. I'm not going to win this. Star Wars Republic Commando comes in at number 35 on the list. It's amazing. It the changes that happen. Things mm-hmm. things happen. Uh, so around it, win back, cover operations at 32, 33, a leap beat agents, 34, a Luigi's mansion. I started too high 35 star Wars, Republic commando, 36, the movie Mario 3d land, 37 stardew Valley. That is the list. That is the podcast for this week. Um, boys, can I be selfish and ask to have the final phrase this week? Go for it. Go All for right. It. Yeah. You, uh, you do you, boo. Thank you. Uh, so, really fast, we obviously this is our primary podcast because we do it every week, but we also do the game club, which, judging by listens, is maybe our primary podcast. Uh, we uh, do that every other week. We just released last week the one for Discworld Noir, uh, which was a weird one. A weird one. There's a lot to talk about in that. It was a pretty long episode. Go listen to it. Uh, if you want to know, if you missed it, you might have missed it because you weren't following us on twitter.com slash jumpupsupercast where we post every episode when it goes live and we post whenever you know sometimes brandon just thinks of a funny meme sometimes it's just whatever uh but follow us there because that is the place to find us we have a facebook page as well uh and obviously we're on your podcast services of choice rate us five stars uh but for the final phrase this week I've just been around a lot of negativity on the internet about video games. People yelling at people for liking Pokemon Let's Go. People yelling at each other about Smash Brothers. People getting mad about Red Dead Redemption reviews. 
And you know what? I just have to say, it's video games, man. Have fun with it. This ain't worth showing our ass over. Have a good time with it. And don't take it too serious.